Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with some more Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition, and we have a fresh new update in, update 43871. I don't know what happens between the previous two updates with all those numbers, but what the hell. So, as you guys know, good old Ethiopian Hauser have a humongous nerf, tons of changes, and a few for some other civilizations as well. So we're going to be jumping straight to that very, very shortly. Just going to be having a look at a couple more things here. We do see, if we scroll down, we see four new maps, 10 new Hauser and Ethiopian cards, a long list of AI improvements, ludicrous zoom out option, which will be available, I believe, we'll see, only for the replay functionality, which will be really good for casting games. So I really like that. And reconnect multiplayer games that went out of sync hopefully that will uh, sort some things out as well i've been having some issues with that when i've been doing some in-house team games so without further ado let's go through it we see we've got some cards so i'm not going to really worry too much about those to be honest with you we do have some four new african regions uh, wow, look at this one. Complete desert here. The dunes. Open desert where animals are scarce, though sand and mines are plentiful. Interesting. Move over to the next one, the Ivory Coast. That looks really cool. I love the uh, trade post there going down, uh, vertically down there. That's awesome. A tropical coastal region named for its export of ivory. Fantastic. Moving down to the uh, Sahel. Uh, that looks quite a nice straightforward map. I like that. Very, very straightforward. Three TPs. Uh, players fight over scattered resources in open grasslands. I like that one. And the Swahili Coast. Oh, God. Oh, look at this one. This one's going to be on the ranked map. Look at that. It's like a proper water map. The only way there is water. I hope I don't get that one. I'm not a huge fan of playing water. Yeah, one player from each team will always begin on the coastal islands. There we go. Okay, that's awesome. The African Rules event. I'm not going to go through this too much, these events and stuff like that. I'm, I'm mainly interested in gameplay changes and civ balances and stuff like that. So let's look at the game here. Stability and performance. Fixed a possible crash when the game boots. Fixed a crash when Desert Warriors attack while in defend. Fixed an issue where the game may get stuck on a black screen. Okay. Graphics. Um, Zebra is no longer clip. I idle animation. Audio. Sounds made by artillery firing now. The volume reduced when off screen. Yeah, there was uh, some audio issues with some people that have been having it. Rescue villagers from Treasure Now, voice lines. Okay. UI changes. Just going to have a quick flick through here to see if there's anything uh, quite, you know, crazy that's changed. Um, nothing much here, to be honest with you. Oh, prefixing a chat with uh, asterisk, send a message to everyone. No longer permanently sends your chat messages to everyone. That's quite good because I think that happened in um, team games. You would have the opponent would be still typing to everyone. And you'd be listening or not listening. You'll be able to see the conversation of all their strategy and what they were going to do. And uh, it was kind of a little bit silly. So, uh, okay, that's a good change. Nice. Hotkeys. Uh, fixed an issue where the fine TC would also, wouldn't also cycle through a US capital building. Legacy hotkey for US explorers. Fixed issue to find the healer. Okay. Multiplayer. Fixed an issue where players were ejected. From a multiplayer lobby when the host set the map type to custom it's interesting restore player handicap setting on rematch uh, restore the player color setting on rematch that's good uh ous recovery added when a multiplayer game falls out of sync a new lobby will be created using a save game with the most common state players will be taken to the lobby where they can download the save game and ready up to continue playing i mean that does seem kind of i mean that seems really awkward that sort of I mean, yeah, of course, they've um, the out of sync here recovery that they, they, they've come up with a way of getting around it and resolving the issue. But that does seem very sort of sort of manual and quite um, archaic there a way that you've sort of got to you get dumped back into a lobby and then you re ready up and then you start the game again uh, where you left off. You know, it seems kind of weird. Uh, I don't know why they couldn't maybe try and do it within the game rather than having to do that. But there you go. Uh, gameplay general heavy range this is really interesting here this is nice heavy ranged infantry now stand in front um, in the front line of formations which feature both the heavy and light ranged infantry that's really good because sometimes you'll have like a skirmisher unit and you have your musketeer unit and your skirmisher will be at the front and you have a cavalry that will just come in and absolutely smack you and you then have to micro them out of the way and bring forward your heavy infantry so that's a nice thing that will help people with the whole microing issue fix an issue where over popping using the inca kalanka could result in, into ghost population which could never be restored using the kalanka now always restores uh, population counts correctly okay 
looking at here, nothing too crazy. Repair cost for the town center is now calculated based on the actual cost of the town center instead of the default 600 wood. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I never knew that. I mean, I, I thought that it was quite expensive to repair TCs. So that's quite a good thing. Uh, effective treasures that increase the hit points of Explorer's HP are now properly applied again after loading a save game. Okay. Uh, fix issue where units and buildings outside of the view could be... Okay. AI fixes. I'm not really going to go through AI fixes that much, to be honest, because I don't really ever play against the AI. So I'm just going to scroll through this. As I say, there'll be a link down below. You guys can check it out. I'm sure you've already gone through it. Anyway, uh, fixes. Let's have a quick look here. Fix issue where units would continue to play their community plaza animations after the community plaza was destroyed. I mean, this whole community plaza business. I mean, come on, guys. Just bring the fire pit back. I mean, it's so silly. Like, you see them just, like, stumbling around. and You, you know, it's just a bit weird. Uh, same with like the um, the tribal marketplace where you know you gather coin and stuff like that for for certain native civs. The animation that they've changed it to just looks weird. Looks like they're just like sort of busking next to it. They're not even like mining. It's very strange. When attacking units, you see their target die. They now attack. Oh, this is this is huge. This is an issue with the whole attack move. So what would happen is you do an attack move command. Let's say your enemy unit's here, you're here. You do an attack move and you click beyond that unit. It will kill that unit, and but then your unit will just stay there. They won't continue on uh, towards the place that you selected to attack move. So that's really good. They should have changed that ages ago. This is an issue where some units HP or resource bars would be, no longer be visible after loading a save game. Use the final building a manor house now correctly spawns. Adding a new zoom out feature. Here we go. Uh, alpha feature may cause performance and graphical issues accessible through the graphics settings. Um, now, I, I don't know if that's actually going to be for proper games. I thought this was only applicable to uh, save games, so like replays and stuff like that. So we'll have a look at that. We'll have a look at that. Fixing up some technologies which should be researched from the starting age are set to post-industrial. Uh, this is all deathmatch stuff, so I'm not really too fussed about that. Uh, fix some issues with the behavior of artillery units. Oh, this is good. Artillery units no longer restart the transition from limber to bombard mode when pressing the stance button uh, during the transition or when giving multiple attack commands during it. Artillery units no longer automatically switch when attacking unit that is not... Ah, oh, thank goodness. They've finally done it. They've finally done it. It's only taken, it's only taken since what? How long has it been now? Nearly a year since D's been released. Let's give him a round of applause for that. <laughs> Fantastic. So what this means is what would happen is when you had your artillery um, in the uh, firing mode and then you decided to move that artillery to a certain distance away, it would decide to automatically pack up. And then that would waste time. And then if you're in a battle, you need to move. So then you have to keep clicking to cancel it and it'll be so annoying. So this time it's nice and easy. If it's in the attack mode, if it's ready to fire and you move it, it will not change. You have to manually change it yourself, which is awesome. Artillery units, culverins in particular, no longer miss the first shot. That's really good when selecting a new attack target while transitioning from the limber to bombard mode. That's really good because culverins have been really weird and funky with that. So that's going to help a lot of people in battles and microing and stuff like that. So that's good. Allow garrison ally units to be ejected from any of your units buildings. That's really good. Yeah, because of um, team games, people can do stupid things. So you can actually eject people from your stuff. Enemy or neutral players wall foundations which lay beneath your finished walls no longer block your walls from being transformed into gates. That's community feedback. I like that they're labeling these community feedback ones. That's nice. Gurkha are now correctly tagged as rifle infantry. Interesting, because I think they may have been skirmishes before. Uh, let's have a look, see if there's anything else. I'm just having a little flick through here. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Just see if there's anything. Fix an issue where Ethiopian villagers could gather influence from a mountain monastery while gathering from an unrelated nearby resource. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Remove various cars that are objectively worse than other available counterparts. This is interesting. So they're just tidying up the decks. So the endless two rockets versus the two rockets. I mean, that makes sense. Why is that even there? Like you just you just get rid of the two rockets, right? Okay, this makes sense. Nice. Okay, yep. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Exploit fixes. Trade route trading posts can trading posts. Sorry, can no longer train native settlement units when they're selected alongside native settlement trading posts. Okay, right, guys. We're getting to the real um, meat and potatoes of this update, which is. 
the Civ balances. Let's have a look at the general first, and then there's going to be extensive Ethiopia and Hauser changes. I might not go through all of them because there's a lot. Okay, and I don't want to bore you guys. So general influence has been adjusted as follows. One influence is now worth 1.2 food, 1.25 food, uh, down from 1.3. Therefore, when the game calculates the cost of units and tech available at native settlements, those with food costs will be, will be converted to a slightly higher influence amount for African civs. This is going to be quite a significant change, especially for the Hauser rush, the tower rush, where you will use the banquet ability and you'll trade up all of your castle for a huge bunch of influence and then you can use that for whatever for whether it's creating units or whether it's creating universities same with ethiopia as well so i like this i like that change that's a, that's obviously a slight nerf there very good fixed an issue that sometimes causes influence costs to be incorrectly rounded up all costs are now properly rounded up or down to the nearest five okay there's some deathmatch changes there. I'm not going to look at those. Um, units and buildings. Auto training units. It is now possible to pause the automatic training of units for the Ottomans, Japanese dojos. Uh, this allows players to stay in full control. I thought that was already done. Or maybe I just looked at the PvP. I'm not too sure. Armors. Armor values are now displayed as percentages. 30% rather than the floats. That's really good because that did confuse a lot of people. Just say it's 30%. It just makes a lot makes it a lot easier to understand for everybody they know that okay that's 30 percent uh, reduction a lot easier than saying 0.3 that can be kind of confusing added new distinctive icons to more clearly communicate the different armor types i like that that's good that's good unit types updated several unit type icons for improved readability and added icons for some types which previously had none hand shock inventory nice so making the ui clearer for newer players and stuff like that which is good Area damage, fix an issue preventing floating points, uh, non-whole number area damage values from being properly calculated. Okay. Um, respawn rate increased. Okay, the African heroes, the respawn rate has increased to 120 seconds from, and African heroes may now only be rescued upon reaching 100% hit points. The hit point threshold to rescue other heroes remain unchanged at 25%. That's actually a big nerf to the... Uh, to the um, the African heroes there. I think the African heroes are obviously the most overpowered heroes. We are going to see if there's any changes to them further down. But I think the heroes or the explorer units with the African civs are just ridiculous. And this is a nice adjustment for that. Now respawn at the military home city shipment point when they're ready. Now using when using the chaos ability, the African heroes now must be nearby the targeted area. Nice. When chaos is used on a location far away, they will now automatically move and use the ability upon arriving. This will make it more convenient to get a treasure in the early game. Okay, cool. That's good. Is this this is just looking at units and buildings, isn't it? Okay. The granary. I'm not going to go through all of these because there are some extensive changes here. Um, unit icons have been changed, further aligned with their in-game appearance. That's nice. After constructing a granary, villagers will now prioritize harvesting dead animals. That's really good because when I was playing the African civs, they would go off and start hunting the live ones again. And then that would then mess up my herding and stuff and it would be a right pain in the ass. So that's really nice. Builders or wagons for universities and everything now transport different cargo to make them visually distinctive. Okay, I like that. Uh, revolutionary gatherers a uh, prize ball the big benny can now be harvested at a rate of five food per second down from eight oof that's quite a hit there i don't know how many people use big benny for food um i used to use it just for wood and gold to sell on the market so we're not too sure anyway let's have a look at this livestock market there's a big adjustment here so coin exchange rate starting value reduced to 40 percent down from 60 no change has been made to the starting wood rate okay that's that's interesting so that means basically that it's going to take you longer to get coin so your coin value for trading is is going to take a little bit longer in game for you to be able to get the most value from selling your cattle whereas the wood rate has stayed the same and that sort of makes sense because most of the time you're most likely going to be using your wood first in the early parts of the game and then as we go later on you might want to start making coin based units or you might want to start to age up into age three so i understand that that's quite a good thing selected breeding cost improved to 75 wood and 75 uh, coin Okay, those, so the selective breeding is the, that's the uh, food upgrade, isn't it? Is that the food upgrade? Is that, I thought that was the, the second food upgrade, the hunting dogs or the, whatever it's called. The, the Basically the hunting dog version is the first one I thought. Okay. Um, Nungalock behind selective breeding. I don't even know what that is. Transhumance. 
I can't even pronounce that. Uh, I haven't played the African Civs in a while, so some of this stuff I don't really know. Cow loans, cost improved. Okay, so it looks like they're improving a lot of the gather rates here, so the economy. Uh, but they are obviously nerfing some elements of the uh, tribal, uh, sorry, the livestock market. Desert Archer has been adjusted as follows. So this is one of the outlaw units, I believe, that you can get from the tower, from ha the Hauser Tower. Uh, cost increased. That's what we'd like to see, a little bit of coin extra. A long range attack range has increased and the range has increased to the short range attack. I don't think the Desert Archer was an amazing unit anyway, so I mean, that's fine. The Desert Warrior, and this is one This is one that people really get annoyed with because you can get them with the Hauser Rush. You can get 10 of them out in H2 and you can keep getting them from the tower. So cost has increased by further five extra gold. Hit points is lower to 140 and the range attack damage is reduced as well. So it's not a humongous nerf. However, because the gold has been increased, that's also going to impact trying to get gold from the livestock market uh, because of the fact that you, your starting value is reduced to 40%. So it's going to take you longer to get that tempo to get that gold income as you need it for these for these units because these units like the desert warrior and the and the desert camel rider or the desert rider they are like they just cost so much gold huge amount of gold so that's a big impact there javelin rider hit points reduced train time reduced melee artillery multiplier reduced so overall there uh, a bit of a nerf but the train time is reduced which is quite nice but yeah the center horseman a uh, very powerful horseman unit in age three hit points have been reduced so that's uh, about an eight percent reduction there in hit points now available in the fortress age from the saloon uh, that was previously industrial attack and hit point shadow upgrades adjusted accordingly interesting so you can get them earlier from there the zenata rider i don't even know what the zenata rider is cost increased wow that's dramatic that's nearly like a that's nearly a 20 percent increase in coin Range resistance is improved to 25%, however, so there's uh, ups and downs there for that. Oh, here we go. The Sudanese Dervish. These are, they throw knives. They're like a skirmisher unit, really good at infantry. Let's have a look here. So speed reduced. I did think they were quite fast, so that's nice. So a small reduction in speed. They now inflict, uh, sorry, that speed reduction there is about, that's a 5% reduction, by the way. Now inflict uh 0.5% to artillery down from one that's nice that's nice so they can't really just tank down artillery and they now inflict a 0.5 um times multiply there to cavalry down from 0.75 so they're not as good ex against cavalry and the shock infantry multiplier adjusted accordingly there we go the berber camel rider range resistance is flipped to melee resistance oh that's interesting so they're sort of a little bit like, um, what are they a little bit like? Yeah, a little bit like a heavy calf, yeah. Because it didn't make much sense. They were sort of like a step rider, um, but they had range resistance, which was kind of a little bit OP, I think. So that range resistance being flipped to melee is going to mean it's going to be a lot harder um, for them to, like, from TC fire and stuff like that, they're, they're going to go down a lot easier. So that's good. Speed reduced from 7 to 7 points. Uh, sorry. Speed reduced to 7 from 7.25. Okay. Oh, here we go. These ridiculous Yorubu Iso riders. These are ridiculous, these units. Hit points now decay at 0.75 per second, uh, up from 0.5. That's another nerf. Cost increased as well by just over 10%, 10, 11, 12% increase on both food and coin. Resistance is improved. That's a buff there. Now inflicts. Oh, that's really good. So they're not going to be able to raid as effectively at all there. 0.25% uh, down from the 1% the or sorry, 100% there. It's kind of annoying when they do these multipliers. Siege damage is reduced. Wow, that is a humongous siege uh, reduction there. Wow, that is like 70%, 60, 70% reduction. Train speed has increased to 20 seconds as well. But the Yoruba Warrior Society's upgrade now also improves their train speed by 50%. Okay. The Cannoneer, the good old Cannoneer, which is basically the, um, they're like the Abbas guns from the Ottomans. So we always see the classic sort of nine Cannoneers come out for the Ethiopians. You see that in H2 with the Gascania. And now we're seeing some damage reductions here um, to 28 down from 30, which is about a sort of six, 7% reduction. 
and a shipment now instead of nine it's reduced to eight and instead of 15 to 14 so i don't know if people are still going to go for this card i still think it's a good card but i think people will still be using the age three card because it's only a reduction of one there and, and the percentage uh, reduction isn't as significant in age three as it is for age two and now we go into the Civ specifics. So there is a lot here for the Ethiopians. So I'm going to try and go through this as quickly as I can because, you know, we're already 20 minutes in and I don't want to bore you guys. So we're going to go through it as quickly as we can. So starting resources, cattle down from five to four. That means obviously their tempo is going to be reduced. They're not going to have as much to fall back on for the livestock market. So their eco isn't as ridiculous. Gaskenya, of course, people have been moaning about this um, heavy infantry unit. Cost has now increased. Um, only an extra five food so not huge melee attack this is really good because their melee attack was ridiculous um, especially against like uh cav i know they counter cavalry but still so so oh no sorry it's been increased damage has been increased sorry okay interesting interesting oh it was the multiplier that was the issue that was the main issue for me oh here we go look multi multiplier has been reduced that's a good thing because i think four was ridiculous dropping it down to three is nice and uh, the range has been reduced and their siege damage as well that's good because i mean heavy infantry don't have the best siege they have relatively good siege but they, it shouldn't be as good as that so that's good and the uh, sebastial mortar there has been reduced the speed has been reduced even further wow I mean, it was as slow as anything anyway, so that's another nerf there. So that's going to be quite a, quite a hit there for the Ethiopians. That's one of their most stable unit, or staple unit, I should say. Tekken cards, the uh, Oromo Migration, that's the one where you got the villagers and you can, you can get them all back if you lose them all. So instead of delivering 12, it's now only delivering 14. And it's added a food cost of 50 food per villager lost. I mean, that's not even worth it now. That's ridiculous. So it's 100 food for a villager. So you get this card and you still have to pay for your food. Uh, that's, that's not even worth it anymore, I don't think. That card isn't worth it. That's going to be scrapped. Get it out of here. Counter Cavalry Tactics no longer have access to this card. I, I can't even remember what that card was, but you don't have it anymore. Uh, the prize Red Bull, which is a good old Big Benny, can now be harvested. Oh, yeah, they already said that above. Can I be harvested at five food? Yeah, I already said that. The Era of Chaos. I don't even know what this is. I'm not going to go through that one because that's an H4 card. The cartridge currency, coin bounty, reward improved. Now only affects inventory and cavalry units. Bounty reward improved, but now only affects, okay. Four semi-fattened uh, Zebu or Zebu. That's the, uh, they've been using that quite a lot actually in age one. Corrected the food total of it. Delivered to 200 from 250. Ouch. Okay, so I don't know if that's going to be used that much. And now we obviously have the infinite one here as well. Um, corrected it. Uh, they now deliver 200 previously they were not fattened at all so that's a that's an improvement there so that might be a, a good card for age three moving on to hauser civ starting resources once again cattle reduction civ bonuses the free cattle delivered with each shipment now spawn at the livestock market that's really good because that was a right that was a right micro fest and it was really annoying so that that's going to really help your macro and you're not gonna have to worry about it too much if there is no livestock market they spawn as the economic home city spawn point instead Units and buildings, good old Falani Archer, long ranged attack damage is reduced. Really? I thought they were an okay unit, as they were. I didn't think they were ridiculous. Okay, so a bit of a nerf there, unfortunately, for the Falani Archer. The Lafidis, man, the Lafidi Widdies. These guys with their dual resistance, uh, I, I can't stand these units. Hit points reduced to 430 from 460. Take that. Damage increased, however. Oh, what? 22 from 21. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I, I can live with that. Heavy cannons available from the British Alliance. Age up train time improved. Well, that's a big train time improve train time improvement there. That's very very good. Uh, that's a 20% reduction. Uh, the griots has been adjusted as far now as a default area intimidation effect radius can no longer intimidate units during treaty. Okay. Technologies and cards. Oh, a few card changes. Champion Cavalry costs reduced, nice, and Imperial Cavalry costs reduced. So making the Age 4 cards maybe more viable, don't know whether that's going to be more of a treaty thing rather than supremacy. Six Raiders uh, reduced to five, and ten Desert Warriors, a good old Rush has been reduced from ten to nine, and the 16 Eurobi allies no longer have access to that card, damn. And the Derba Parade now increased the movement speed of the Lafidi Knights by 10% and Raiders by 5 instead of improving their train speed. This fixes an issue where after certain upgrades or cars were required, the Hauser could 
attain instant training cavalry. Oh, it's good that they've sorted that out. Good. So there you go. A few more nerfs on the cards there. Not as many units. Hopefully reducing the impact of the good old Hauser rush that we've been seeing. The uh, Sewer Skewers. Interesting. Now also improves huntable and herdable yield. And they're doing the same here with the four semi-fat and the Sangha. That's the equivalent of the Ethiopian ones. And there we go for the Hauser guys. Aztec, Azzy baby. If you don't know, I'm loving Azzy right now. One of my favorite sieves. And this is just brilliant. We're going to be seeing that more Azzy, I hope, um, with a good old buff to the Puma Spearmen. I thought the Puma Spearmen were already really good with their insane siege damage. But we do have a cost improvement, which is awesome. This is to both food and coin. A 10% reduction across that, which is absolutely amazing. Hit points, however, have been reduced. But... I'm okay with that. You know, siege damage has been reduced a tad as well. Now, there was something in here in the preview build that said that they would be getting an extra Spearman unit for the six Spearman card. So it'd be changed from six to seven in age two. And I don't see that on here. So I think they may have removed that. So I don't know. I think that might be a neutral change there. Maybe the hit points is a little bit significant. That's a little bit scary, but we'll see. Brits, longbow, the line of sight has been increased. That's one of the first changes to Brits I've ever seen, I think, which is kind of crazy. And finally, the United States, the Louisiana purchase card here. Uh, age three now spawns three bison down from six. Yeah, I mean, that was crazy. That card was crazy. Whenever I played Treaty, whenever I played Supremacy on a team game, having all that bison spawn at all of your town centers and you get six of them as an insane amount of food and that's going to the cost increased is also a thousand coins to do it as well so yeah that was kind of a crazy card uh maps obviously we have some changes here to the standard map sets so they've got the new ones in here the sahal and the dunes the ivory coast and it's repeating the sahel again i think it means the so basically it's adding the four new maps into the standard map set which is nice map fixes okay i'm not going to go through the map fixes too much here i'm just going to i'm going to glide through these and uh, that's pretty much it guys what's on the horizon let's have a look because i hope that we still get this continual support uh, because of age of empires 4 coming out very shortly i just hope that we still get a good support on age of empires 3 so coming up we have empire wars game mode interesting home city customization for the civs that don't already have them more unique explorer skins okay that's good a new never before seen game mode for aoe 3 definitive edition that's kind of scary because i mean if it is a great game mode then i mean can you imagine if it was like settler massacre or something like that uh if it is a really good game mode then it could be potentially be seen on the ranked sort of in the competitive scene you know we see we see treaty and we see supremacy we don't really see much of deathmatch so that would be kind of interesting oh my god a new civilization are you kidding me that's insane there's a new civ come in and finally new historical battles featuring carp i'm not really interested in that too much okay guys that's going to wrap it up let me know what you think of this brand new update i've got to say one of the best things out of this update is the numerous changes to the ethiopia and hauser and of course that as he change i'm not too sure if i'm going to like that or not but hopefully i will and of course the rumors of a new game mode and a new civilization coming up which is absolutely awesome so let me know down in the comments below what you think of this update whether it's definitely needed and whether or not people will be moving away from treaty and coming back to supremacy now that ethiopia and hauser are being kept under control let me know what you think and of course if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and you can catch me streaming on twitch at widgie1 catch you guys later